Hello guys, welcome back to Not Just Maker, it's Marco here and today we talk about the Iron Golems. I did it, I did it, this time for real, I actually did it, I painted my Iron Golems plus an extra converted warrior in 5 hours. Initially, I planned to paint the original color scheme, but it never convinced me too much. A bit too car body work. I know they should be master blacksmiths, but it wasn't my favorite direction. Browsing my collection of references and the web looking for inspiration, this picture popped out and the path was immediately clear. The Rust Golems. Before starting with the serious work, I have a big, big announcement. The Patreon page of Not Just Mecha is officially live. I followed your advice and numerous requests and I finally did it. Really, thanks for all the encouragement. I started this journey on YouTube on the wave of inspiration, without any expectations, and in the last two months this became really the best part of my day. I hope this will be a step forward for us to become a proper interactive community and a way to invest more and more time and efforts making interesting videos because I love it. So, check out the Patreon page and take a look to the sweet, sweet rewards. Thanks a million, guys. Really, thanks a million. Ooh, and in the description, you can find also a bunch of Amazon links to the materials I use in the video. That's another great way to support my work, getting at the same time new paints and tools. Now, let's go back to work. Rust is definitely a complex subject, if you want to make it super realistic. But for this project, I need to catch its essence, to do something visually striking, very fantasy and possibly fast. The plan is to use a classic split complementary scheme with orange as primary and most diffuse set of tones on my armors. Something between magenta and violets for my secondary tones, this will be on the skins, and blue-green tones as ascent on weapons and interesting metallic elements, and this will be very interesting applied to metals. I've already primed my models, as usual with pure Molotov Black by Airbrush. I did a job when I primed Anthem Beasts, and I deleted the footage by mistake. Lol. I made a little conversion on this model to be at the same time uh, Signifer and Perfector. I put the banner on his back and I've hidden my crimes under the chain bolas. And since I'm a declared power player, I immediately converted another model to be an extra elite warrior and have some extra options while building lists. Let's start with the Zenithal highlight. This time I use a mix of Liquid X White Ink and Airbrush Thinner, using roughly 20-30% of thinner. I want the white a bit more transparent to create a gentle transition from the black primer to the maximum white. In the next steps I'll use the airbrush to create my shadows, but the mid-tones and the highlights of my skin will be set by this step, so I have to be more controlled and spray like I'm already in an advanced step. My Zenithal light for gaming models is always more diffuse and aggressive than a usual black and white sketch. This is because I always reinforce the shadows with different tones and I need a starting value a bit higher. In camera the white seems quite strong, but in person it's more like a light grey. On top of this result, since the diluted white isn't opaque enough to give me a strong white coverage, I'm going to apply a second layer of pure white ink, hitting only the upper areas and my focal points to have an extra highlight. Time for my midtones and for shadows, and I use magenta diluted with airbrush thinner for this purpose. I understand that a percentage can be tricky to understand and apply when we play with these small quantities of paint, so I prefer to show you the proportion while I'm preparing the mix. I add also a few drops of AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish to avoid the shiny finish of the ink. This is just something I do for the camera so you are able to see what's happening on the model, but it's something I don't usually do in a standard paint job. I like my shadows a bit shiny to enhance their depth. I spray the model from below, but quite loosely. This is only my first shadow, we can still consider this step like the midtones, so I don't want to eat only the lowest parts, but also the surroundings. 
Some of you guys had trouble spraying inks, especially when heavily diluted or using my medium high pressure setting. So I'll show you a trick to overcome these issues. Working on tiny models, you need extreme control, and this is true for every kind of paint or dilution. And this control is all in the trigger. Moving it back and forward while spraying, you alternate quickly paint and pure air. This way the color hits the surface but can't go anywhere because immediately after application, you're using the hair flow to dry it and set it in place. I'll explain this better next week in a proper video about hair brushing. And here is our first shadow and the main tone and sensation for my skins. In the next step I'm going to enhance the volumes with a darker shadow, this time using a cold tone light turquoise to add contrast with the warm tones I plan to use in my highlights and in the main areas of the models. Here you can see again my dilution. Increasing the watery part of the paint with some thinner, you get a color more transparent and easier to modulate and blend. Same application from below, this time keeping a sharper angle. I'm almost perpendicular to the base to get only the lowest areas of the model. Thanks to the illusion, I don't have to worry about getting the right result at the first pass, but I can build my layer slowly and being always in control. This will be at the same time the base of my skin tones and the general sensation and tones I want to see in transparency on the armors and the rest of the models. Time for the armors and a lot of rust. I usually do this with inks, but since I know for sure that everyone has some contrast paints in these drawers, let's do this using contrast. The concept is really simple. You know that contrasted inks are quite terrible when applied with a brush on a simple flat surface, without any details or crevices. The result is not uniform, you have uh, pools, unwanted marks and strange drying patterns all over the surface. I'm using exactly that to create the base for my rust. You need to keep a mental library of every kind of wanted or unwanted effect, sooner or later everything comes handy. I'll use Agaros Dunes and Griffound Orange with a bit of medium, and I'll keep open on the table Agrax if I need to wet blend a darker tone directly on the model. I did some tests and I had the best result and behavior with a basic mix of 5 drops of each brown and 1 drop of medium. I want the paint to flow easily, creating its own movement and patterns. I cover every single piece of armor with my mix. I'm very very careful keeping the mix away from the skins, but inside the borders of the armor, the application is super loose and irregular. I change frequently my brush strokes, dabbing and moving the paint in random ways, creating different levels of thickness and transparencies. Even with this uh, thick application, you can still see the work of the underpainting in transparency, setting our main values. This is particularly clear in uh, the burner and the shields. Here you can see the result after a couple of heavy layers of matte varnish. It's important to have a very matte finish to make uh, rust truly believable. In the next step I use Vallejo Rust Effect and Scale 75 Indian Shadow to add to the armors at the same time textures and uh, lights and shadows. The rust effect is only a really thick and matte orange, nothing more, and you can mix your own or just use any kind of matte orange. I'll use an old brush to steep all the upper areas with the orange. I want to save time creating textures and different values at the same time, and steepling is a fast, easy, but really controlled way to do both. And it's very funny and forgiving, so perfect for gaming models.
and I drew the exact same thing in the shadows with a dark desaturated brown. I need a thick solid paint to give dimensionality to my rust. Rust is not only color but something with uh, its own volume. Load the brush and unload it just a bit. This is not uh, a dry brush and we want a good amount of paint on the bristles. Also, I don't have to think too much about the positioning because I have already a precise map of lights and shadows. And here is the result. We have now two levels of lights and shadows and a lot of interesting movement. I'll add more contrast later, but now I need to have in place the other tones of the skin to understand better what I'm doing and where I'm going. With black and turquoise ink, with scale 75, bearing blue and black metal, I'm going to create a non-metallic, metallic contrast paint. LOL. I want for the weapons, chains and accessories a finish like an unpolished blue-greenish metal. With this mix I have metallic pigments with the natural shine of inks, their fluidity and transparency, but altered by the opacity of the light bluish grey. Trust me, the effect will be great, especially later with some shiny highlights making a strong contrast with the base metal. I use uh, black ink and burnt amber to give the idea of a bit of rust inside the mix, and scale 75 graphite and trash metal. These will enter easily in every single detail, creating an effect similar to contrast paints, but metallic. Similar process with my second metallic color, this time quite neutral to not interfere with the general scheme and to tie everything together. Take a look to this metal. It seems already washed with something like null oil. It's defined with a single pass, and when I light it even a bit more, it will create a very strong jump between the basic matte finish and its lights. I use pterodon turquoise to quickly paint the handles of the ambers. And since I want to see all the basic tones in place, I'm going to paint the bases with Plague Beater Flash, wet blended with Militarum Grey for the shadows and some extra definition. Also the bases have a nice zenithal light, so the effect will be immediately strong and effective. Followed by a simple and quick dry brush of Vallejo Nocturna for a skin and pale flesh. It's finally time for the wet palette and my beloved Chimera. Never trust a painter with a table or a palette to clean. Now that I have all the basic tones and values in place, I want to enhance even more the lights and shadows on my armors, while adding even more little details, dots, scratches and movement. The palette is not only a way to keep your paint moistened, you can create all your color progressions in a single place and have them available all at the same time. Real painting is not a defined step by step, but you need to jump constantly back and forward from a tone to another, and with a wet palette you can do it easily. I need to move the video fast here because visually it's not really so engaging, but this is the phase where I spent most of the time, adding teeny tiny, sometimes almost microscopic details, little cuts, dots and visual interest on a surface that originally is completely smooth and simple. I apply all these following the lights and shadows already there and choosing my tones accordingly. Here's a juicy thing. Using Chimera, Phthalo Blue Red Shade and Orange, I mix a chromatic black. Check the video about color theory to know why it happens. 
I use this super dark but rich tone to glaze quickly my extreme shadows and set my minimum value for the armors. Again, super easy, I just need to enhance what's already there. And this is the result of all the work on the armors. We are around 90% of the whole work done. Then I create a scale of lights for the skins. I don't really need shadows because they are all set in place from the beginning with the airbrush, so I need only to push forward the lights. Enhancing the lights, I work on definition around the muscles, and I add lines and interesting textures to this uh, unhealthy skin. I use scale 75 trash metal on a piece of parchment paper to highlight the neutral metals. The contrast in value is not so high, but the contrast between the dull finish and the shiny highlights will be super strong and with a particular visual impact. I apply the highlights with irregular brush strokes. These uh, points of light represent irregular sharp edges, uh, cuts uh, and damages on the basic finish, and a bit of randomness helps to sell the idea. I use a mix of scale 75 alchemy, cobalt and emerald to highlight uh, all the other green bluish metals. Here the concept is even more effective thanks to the darker initial tones and the open play surfaces. Here I can easily do irregular head highlights to underline the sharp, polished edges and add little cuts, damages and imperfection to the flat areas to add details and movement filling the empty spaces. They are almost done. The details pop out perfectly and now I have a lot of contrast between different materials and their finishes. Time for oils, but this time with a huge twist. I'll use only two colors this time, magenta and black, because I don't want to interfere too much with the scheme. The cap of this tube is completely stuck. When oil is dry, it's like concrete, so don't ruin your hands trying to force it. Just use a lighter to hit uh, the end of the tube and the cap. The paint will melt a bit and the hot plastic uh, lose the tight bond with the tube. I prepared a mix of roughly 60% magenta, 40% black uh, and pure black. The dilution of black here is a key point because I'll use it in an unusual way. Actually, the way it's supposed to be used, but uh, never mind. So I'll use a small pointy brush to put the paint only inside the panel lines, sharp corners and engravings. I don't need to paint the flat areas because uh, I can only lose information on them at this point. As I said, dilution is the key and is something you have to test on the model because too many factors play together here. Room temperature, brand of oils, the brush, you know to have the perfect dilution when hitting a panel line with the tip of the brush you can see the paint running inside the detail filling precisely all the line by itself white spirit has a super low surface tension and on a large model you can see the paint moving by itself for entire centimeters the application takes a bit longer than a general wash but it's still a super easy fun and forgiving technique and seeing the paint moving around by itself, it's uh, oddly satisfying. Also, big, huge bonus, you don't have to clean, because all the paint is already only in the right spots. On the skins I need to close the gaps between the airbrush microdots and to gain back uh, a bit of satin finish, much more natural and realistic for skins, so on them I give a simple general wash. And this is very light and transparent because I don't want to lose too much value on my highlights.
For the same reason, I'm going to clean the skins directly with my spirit. I don't want to use the two steps cleaning on them because I don't have the need to soften my transition. That are already where I want. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check these videos up here. I want to add just a little bit of pigments in the lower part of the legs. I unload the brush on a piece of paper and rub the surface just to obtain a dusty look. I don't want to hide too much stuff, just add the sensation that they are working on a dusty ground. On the bases, I have already that kind of sensation thanks to the super matte finish, so I don't need to cover everything in pigments. My palette kept all my colors alive, so I can give some little touch-ups on the skins and finishing touches here and there, because I'm a hyper-functional monomaniac. And they are done. Almost five hours of work. I risked seriously to fail again, but this time I did it. And perfectly in time for the next War Cry game night. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. You can ask me anything down below with a comment and follow my projects through the week using one of my socials. If you want to support the channel and help me increasing the quality of this content and the time I can spend shooting and editing, check out my Patreon page and maybe join the community. See you next week, guys.